Hey guys, welcome back to Homeville, and this week we are back on the poor neglected Rockstar. All right, guys, welcome back. I know it's been a while for the uh, Rockster. It's been neglected in the back of the shed here for quite some time while I was concentrating on the Al Ferrari and the Frankenhauler. Um, if you missed the last episode on the Rockster, uh, I'll put a link up above so you can catch up. And uh, basically, to uh, give you an overview, this is uh, or was the ugliest Porsche in Australia that uh, I found and some people have done some very horrible modifications too. I have done a lot of modifications myself. Um, cosmetically, yeah, it's still looking pretty rough, but uh, that will be fixed in the not too distant future. Uh, since then, I have swapped out and put a, an Audi V8 engine into the back, 4.2 V8. Um, it's now running and working the way it's supposed to. I still have a slight brake issue, which I think I might be able to fix in this episode. And um, yeah, we've got a, a few more little touches to do before we get it out to the track and finally give it that uh, test run with the new drivetrain. So uh, first things first, let's get under the bonnet and I'll show you uh, what I think my brake issue was and let's see if we can fix it. Okay, so the whole time that I've had this car, every time I try and hit the brakes, um, the pedal felt odd. It basically almost felt, as soon as you touched it, almost felt like the pedal started sucking down to the floor. And it was just, it was a very odd sensation and wasn't working correctly. Now, uh, I went through, I bled the brakes and did all that sort of thing, but I don't think that was my issue. Uh, I think my issue is with the booster that's in here. And... Um, I tried capping it off last time, and when I jumped on the brakes uh, with the booster completely disconnected, it worked as, pos as it's supposed to, uh, albeit a very hard pedal, but it didn't have that odd sensation. So it's telling me that it was something to do with the booster. And after doing a bit of research, what I'm pretty sure it is, is down here, there is a one-way valve uh, in the booster. And I think that is probably gone. So uh, I went and ordered myself a replacement. So we're gonna replace this and double check it and just see if uh, with this replaced, if the pedal then feels normal and uh, we can tick another job off the list. All right, so I got my new one-way valve in there. I had to mess around a little bit to try and get a, uh, a hose that was the right size because this is sort of a generic one. Uh, but uh, it's all in there now, it's all nice and sealed. So uh, let's start the car up and feel that pedal. Well, the brake pedal no longer feels strange. It feels like a pedal. I think we have a win. All right, so the next thing I need to tackle is my gear shift. Now, um, if you watched the previous video, you will have seen that I really struggled getting second to third because there is this um, shifter at the moment is is really good forward and backwards. It's nice and tight, but this is like is is got uh, so much slop in it, and that comes down to this uh, the blue cable here. I think is uh, uh, is not functioning correctly on the gearbox end. So uh, let's go and investigate that. All right, well that is disappointing. I pulled my uh, shifter cables out and I actually had a second set of shifter cables sitting uh, up in storage. I pulled them down and first of all, I noticed the color difference, but then I noticed there is a length difference. And uh, yeah, I believe the uh, shorter ones are probably for a 996, uh, so a 911, which obviously has the gearbox in front of the engine, whereas the Boxsters needs to be a little bit longer. So that's not gonna work. So I spent all that time wrestling these cables out so uh, yeah, I uh, need to put them back in again and uh, 
just see what I can do about making the shifting better without changing the cables. All right, the next thing I need to do to um, the Rockster is uh, this back it looks very plain, particularly for a track car. I did some research. I, I briefly thought about building one myself, and it's a lot of work to make the molds and get the shapes, and, uh, and I don't know enough about aero to actually do it. So I um, jumped onto the internet and found this made out of the finest Chinesium known to man. Um, I believe it is actually carbon fiber, at least the skin is real carbon fiber. Um, but uh, I'm hoping that it's actually copied from something that uh, probably was thought about with some aero as opposed to just nothing. But either way, uh, it's going to function in some form uh, and giving me some, some rear downforce and uh, break up the look of the back of this car. Cause I mean, it's a race car, it needs, needs, needs the aero. But uh, let's, quickly have a look at the hardware that comes with it and see what we need to do about making it so it can actually function on a on the Rockstar. All right, that is uh, just sitting in place at the moment with the standard stands on it. Now, like I mentioned, I think the aerofoil should pretty much do what I need it to do, but the stands are a, another issue. The center of these stands actually look quite solid. Uh, I think they're sort of about 10 mil thick aluminium. They're, they're quite a solid uh, mount, but then you get up to the top and they come with this dodgy little bracketing system that these things are just uh, a couple of bits of sheet metal just bolted together and the uh, the adjustment there, this is all just by the tension of the bolting. That is definitely not going to cut the mustard and the other thing is that they uh, design them just to have a rubber pad on them and, uh, and just screw into your boot or um, in this case the rear hatch. And if I'm getting even you know, a hundred kilos of downforce on this. You imagine a hundred kilos trying to push into this fiberglass boot. It's not going to work. So, um, essentially what I th need to look at now is I think I need to design up a new, uh, upright for the wing and, uh, and see if I can a add some adjustment in here that will actually be solid and B, uh, make something that's actually going to be able to transfer this downforce into the chassis of the car so it'll actually be able to utilize it and not just damage things. So after taking a bunch of measurements I got onto CAD and uh, started designing up the uprights that I wanted and uh, I tell you what having this uh, world-class plasma table is such a game changer for all of this sort of thing just being able to draw something up and cut it out is uh, is worth its weight in gold. So with a bit of tidying up I can uh, get all these uprights and everything together and uh, see how they look. All right, well that was a, uh, a whole bunch of work, but I now have my uprights with my adjusters. So I've got five uh, positions here. These are spaced out differently. So I, I've actually got um, quite a range of adjustment that I put in here for these uprights. Uh, they are double thickness at the bottom, so they're, they're uh, 10 mil thick. I did very briefly consider like the swan neck mounts or whatever they're called. Uh, so basically mounting on the top of the wing. The issue is, is that all the weight is going to be pushing down on the wing, obviously. Um, and, uh, and, and also from underneath can be going to be really sucking it down. And there's no attachment points on the top. Now I could put bolt holes through and, uh, and plates underneath, but those plates uh, would really need to be recessed and be perfectly smooth with the wing to be a, of any benefit because obviously the reason for the swan neck wings is you get more downforce from the underside of the wing uh, that uh, that airflow moving quickly and smoothly over the underside of the wing and that's what the benefit is if I've got plates there that aren't perfectly smooth then it's it defeats the purpose anyway and as I said there's there's it's just much easier to use the mounts on the bottom and uh, and get the uh, the uh, best downforce I can so that's why I went that way so now I'm going to actually weld these uprights together and, uh, and that way I have nice uh, sort of solid uh, pieces and uh, then we'll start looking at what we need to do to put it on the car. 
So I've got to practice my aluminium TIG welding again by stitch welding all these uprights together. And then I start making some mounting plates to mount the adjusters to the wing itself, which takes a little bit of tidying up and then bending it to the curve of the wing, which I just do by hand. And my camera has been dying on me, but uh, I welded the adjusters to the wing mounting plates. And then it's just a coat of black paint and we're looking good. All right, so I have my uprights for my wing and uh, they are actually uh, hopefully going to do the job. So I've used the same feet that came with the, uh, with the wing that I had. Um, that's just a nice way to uh, bolt it onto the tailgate, but um, I'm still gonna have to do something else underneath there. We'll get to that. But for now, um, let's go and try it out on the car and see where we can mount it. So I spent a bit of time to just work out the rough location of where the wing is going to go, and then I start making up some base plates for the wing feet. Now I also need to make some backing plates for the inside of the hatch to reinforce these mounting bolts. And by making up these plates, I'm spreading the load over a much larger area of the hatch rather than the small feet that it came with. All right, that is actually looking pretty good. I have angled it up slightly. Uh, I think that's sort of reasonable. It's, it's hard to know what the angle of attack should be because it does have that aerofoil at the back and there's the uh, uh, there's the the air is going to come over at sort of this angle so there's a bit there i might need to angle it more i don't know enough about wings to uh, actually know the setting it's giving me more feeling what it does on track but at the moment i don't really have anything at the front to balance it out um, at the moment to be honest um, a lot of it is to balance out the looks but uh, I do want it to be functional in the end. Uh, to get it to sit on properly, I made these aluminium plates for the feet so that it's got aluminium plates there. I made it so that it can actually take a heavy load because I, I mounted it so far back. It's actually mounted so far back that it mounts onto the, uh, I've actually dinted the rubber slightly, but it mounts onto this lip so it can transfer the weight into the car and not just onto uh, flexing the boot. All right, we have a wing. It's, it's pretty solid. Um, it would probably take my weight. I mean, the wing itself feels like it might actually break if I tried to give it too much. Um, it could be more solid, the uh, boot or the uh, rear hatch of the car could be a little bit more solid. Realistically, the best way would be to mount it through the hatch and uh, onto the, the floor or the back of the car. The trouble is, is that I need to be able to get the hatch open and closed. And without cutting it all, without cutting it all up and all the rest of it, there's, there's no easy way to do it. Um, yeah, I suppose I could mount it right on the back. Like, this works for the time being. It's, uh, it's definitely going to do something. I still don't have any aero at the front to balance it out. Um, a, uh, a good splitter could definitely help in that um, in that area, but for the time being, I think we have procrastinated enough, and it's time to hit the track. So uh, as of next week, it's shakedown time, baby. I am going to be uh, hopefully getting the Rockster out onto the track next week, and we'll see how it do does. So um, hopefully you will join me for that, and. Um, the rest of my silly project. So uh, until next time, I'll see you then.